Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing another gun and ammo collection. This is the collection as of the end of 2018, start of 2019. Uh, it's now November 1st, 2018, so I don't think I'm going to be acquiring anything new towards the end of the year here. So I feel like this is a good spot to finally call it. Uh, the collection has grown quite a bit since the last one, so there's some new treats in here. Also, I just want to give a big thank you for all the love and support the last one's gotten. It's sitting at like half a million views right now, which is insane. I didn't think it was going to get even a quarter of that, so <laughs> thank you all for that again. So let's go ahead and jump right into this one. It should be fun. Starting things off, we have the Introtech DC-9, or commonly referred to as the Tech 9 This jam matic is actually one of the few guns named by name in the Assault Weapons fan. I've always preferred the pre-band models to the later ones. The Tech's known for a lot of things, but being reliable is not one of them. Um, I got it pretty much just because of its history and its cosmetic value. Continuing on with the uh, duo of gangster guns here, we have the Masterpiece Arms 9mm Mac clone. This is a pretty cool clone. My only issue with it is how much it weighs. Uh, that barrel extension on the end of it adds so much to the weight that it's actually almost unbelievable. Because once you pull it off of there, it feels way, way lighter. And also, after you take that barrel extension off, and if you pull the mag out and find a flush mag to fit, it actually becomes quite compact, which I think is pretty cool. And a taste of Italy here, we got the Beretta 92S Italian Surplus, chambered in 9mm. This was the first full-size handgun I ever picked up. I grew up on stuff like Resident Evil, so I've always been attracted to the Beretta look, especially uh, growing up playing those games and seeing movies where it was everywhere. And especially for the price, I had to have that one. Paired with it, we have the first handgun I ever picked up. This is a Beretta 950 Jetfire, chambered in 25 ACP. It's got the flip-up barrel. And my only issue with it is I'm having a really hard time finding stuff for it. Like, I wanted to find matching grips for it in the uh, 92S, but I couldn't really find any. So, maybe in the future I'll find something for it. Moving to the other side of the table here, we have the Beretta 92FS and Inox. This is uh, actually kind of a recent pickup. You know, it was one of those ones I didn't plan on buying, but when I walked in there and I saw it, I, I you know, I just, I ended up leaving with it. The, the sights on the 92FS are way better than the 92S. I got it paired with a Beretta 32 Tomcat. Another one with a flip-up barrel. And I think it makes a pretty cool pair, even though I don't have that much experience with this one. But, you know, as time goes on, I'm sure I'll get more acquainted with it. And moving on, we have my 1911s. We'll start off with the Kimber Ultra Carry 2 in stainless. It's chambered in 9mm, and this is basically a pocket 1911. Um, it's got the skeleton grips on it to match the skeleton trigger and skeleton hammer. I really like that fiber optic on there, and this is a really cool carry gun, although it does not get carried that much. Next to it, we have the Colt 1911 Series 70 government model. I wanted something as close as I could to a GI World War II spec, and for the price, this was as close as I was going to get without buying the genuine thing. And uh, all said and done, I'm pretty happy with it. It fills every role I needed to fill. Taking a look at some of my German stuff, we have a 1941 Luger, chambered in 9mm. This is a mixed match parts Luger, um, and in my price range, I couldn't really afford an all matching parts one. And I got it more as a collection piece for my collection personally. I know you, the mixed match parts ones are less collectible, but for my collection, it was, it was perfect for the role it was supposed to fill. Next to that, we have a 1944 Walther P38. Um, this one is all matching, and it's in great shape. And I actually didn't pay that much for it. I got it for quite a deal, so I couldn't really pass it up. Um, this P38 and the Luger are both German military marks for the time, with no importation marks. So that leads me to believe that they were both GI bringbacks, which to me is pretty damn cool. Moving on down the line, we have the Walther PPKS. This is the stainless version chambered in 380. Um, I grew up on stuff like James Bond. Bond. James Bond. So eventually I was going to have one of these. It was just a matter of time. Uh, not only James Bond, but just its history in general, you know, th this is just one of the most iconic guns in the world, so if it's good enough for James Bond and pretty much everybody else that's ever had one, it's got to be good enough for me. Next up, we have the GSG MP40 pistol. This is a reproduction of the German MP40 from World War II. Uh, it's chambered in 9mm, 
and as a reproduction, it's pretty close. It'd be even closer if you uh, SBR'd it and threw the stock on it. But as it stands, this is as close as most of us are ever going to get to owning an MP40, which was worth picking it up for me. Moving on to my Glocks, we have the Gen 4 Glock 17. Nothing special here. This is just a plain Jane stock Glock 17. Next up, we have my plain Jane Gen 4 Glock 19. I have a TLR4 mounted up front. It's a laser light combo. I take this with me from time to time, especially if I'm going out at night. But for the most part, this is my bedside gun for uh, bumps in the night. I would probably carry it more if I had an inside the waistband holster for it. But it's just so hard to find one for that TLR4. Next up, we have my Gen 4 Glock 26. I've Gucci'd the hell out of this one. I've thrown a bunch of aftermarket parts on it. I mean, we threw an Agency Arms trigger on it, an S3F Solutions barrel, a bunch of other various gold parts such as the back plate, extended controls, uh, bag release, a uh, slide release, the pins, plunger extractor, and uh, what kind of sights did we go with? I think we went with uh, Ameriglow Trigicons. But yeah, this thing's pretty damn gucci out. And as far as the uh, mag plates go on the bottom, those are actually gold rustoleum that I did myself. Moving down, we have the Glock 42. It's the Glock that's chambered in 380. I got this one before the 43 came out. Otherwise, I probably would have got the 43. You're a loser. But it's got some TFX Pros on it. Besides that, it's pretty plain Jane. Moving down the line of other polymer stuff I got, we got a Smith & Wesson Shield 45. When I found this thing, I fell in love with it. It's a small, compact, single stack 45. Shoots like a dream, and it's really skinny and comfortable to carry. Doesn't really dig into ya. Yeah, I recommend giving one of those a try if you haven't. We got my budget M&P here. This is a Smith & Wesson SD9VE. I picked this thing up for like next to nothing on sale one day. I haven't gotten too much use out of it, but I do have it in case I need it. But for next to nothing, a budget M&P, why not? Moving on down, we got the SIG P320 Compact, chambered in 9. I really, really like this. A lot of people are complaining about it, especially when it first launched, but I've had no issues, and I seem to really like the damn thing. I have a TLR4 mounted on the front, just like my G19, and I kind of substitute those back and forth for whatever job they might be doing. Alright, you all gave me a hard time about not having a revolver, so I did get around to picking one up. This is a Smith & Wesson Chief Special 38 Snub Nose, and I just really, really like these old police revolvers. I've always thought they were really neat. Uh, the action on this one is very smooth, but, you know, I hate shooting J-frames. <laughs> I really do. I would have picked more revolvers up, but it's not that I don't like them, it's just the ones I like are super expensive. Yet again, we got my, my favorite wild card, my Jack Sparrow Plunder the High Seas gun. This is this is my black powder pistol. I got it from my grandfather. Still have never shot it. Don't know that much about it. it. Sits in the safe and doesn't really go anywhere. I'm not a huge fan of black powder, but it is what it is. It's still pretty dang cool, and everybody always wonders what the hell it is when they see it. Next up, we have the good old M1 Grand, the greatest battle implement ever devised. This is a 1944 M1 Grand. It is made by Springfield Armory. And that's one of my favorite sounds in the world. Another pretty interesting thing we have here. This is a Commando Mark III. This is a Thompson clone chambered in 45, And it might be one of the funkiest Thompson clones I've ever seen. Its action's pretty sticky. Uh, it takes grease gun magazines. The charging handle's on the side. It's got that ugly magwell and that enormous box trigger. The only thing this thing's got going for it is a nice, good old-fashioned wood stock. Other than that, I think I'd probably rather have an auto ordinance, but eventually. Let's keep on trucking through. This is an STG-44 clone made by German Sports Guns. It's chambered in the 22, which is about the only thing wrong with this clone. I would have preferred it to have been chambered in pretty much any other cartridge, but... Yeah, beggars can't be choosers, and to even be able to own anything close to an STG is a win in my book. Moving on to another gun by GSG. This is the GSG 522. This is a clone of the good old H&K MP5. As soon as I get around to it, I'm going to throw the telescoping stock onto this one. Uh, I like the old bootleg stock, but I think the retractable one would probably be 
a little bit more tactical looking, which I think would look better on it. But in the near future here, I'm going to maybe look into getting a Zenith or the actual authentic H&K. Uh, there's so many different versions of them out there. I would like to have an MP5 style weapon chambered in 9mm. But that's when the funds allow it, and right now is really not an option because they're like 2000 2500 bucks. In the future, maybe. Alright everybody, I'm going to say it. I own a high point carbine. I'm not proud of it, but once you get past the fact that it's a high point, let's just stick, let's just push that aside for right now. I know it's a very gross and touchy subject. For a hundred dollars, you're getting a pretty good pistol caliber carbine here. And as much as I wanted to hate it, I don't, and I don't know why. As many of you may have noticed by now, I actually don't have any ARs. And that's not really on purpose, it's just a case of I haven't done it yet. And I've been meaning to, by the time I do another one of these videos, I should have one or two. But I get that question a lot, and I just kind of wanted to address it real quick. But anyways, moving on. This is my Romanian SAR-1. This is an AK pattern rifle, chambered in the 7.62x39. I am also one of those weirdos that prefers the AK and wooden furniture. Part of me also kind of wants to get another one and just go crazy with it. Next up, we have an inherited gun. This is a Savage 22, model 87A. This is an old tube fed 22. Vintage aside, it's not really worth that much, surprisingly. Uh, it's worth more to me as sentimental value than it is actual value, so this is going to be one of the ones that sit in the safe probably forever. Moving on down the line, we have a Mossberg 500 overfolder. I think this one looks really awesome, especially with that heat shield shroud on the front. Somewhere in the future, I kind of want to get one of those vertical foregrips that go onto the pump. I got this one partly because my collection was seriously lacking in the uh, pump shotgun department, so hopefully that role is filled at least for a little while. Next up, we have my boomstick. See this? This is my boomstick! This is a 12-gauge uh, double-barrel coach gun made by Stoger. If I ever start venturing into NFA territory, this might be one of the first ones to become an SBS. Now, if I were to go through the SBS process, I would probably chop the barrels at the end of the wood foregrip, or 12 inches, whatever one happened to look better. And as far as the stock goes, I would probably chop off the stock part, leaving the nub similar to the shockwave. Obviously, leaving everything in wood to make it look that much more badass. Moving on to the final two guns of this list. First up, we have an H&R single shot 12 gauge. And secondly, we have a single shot 12 gauge cover. And that's pretty much the list as far as guns go, everybody. Uh, next up, we're gonna be taking a look at ammo, but uh, take a look at this panoramic shot of just everything laying out on the floor. few things that don't fit some uh, 54R uh, we got a whole can of mini mags 30 carbine with M1 carbine stuff a whole can of M1 grand stuff uh, about half a can of 762 by 39 mostly steel case a completely full can of 9 millimeter Luger a completely full can of 45 ACP a whole can of 380 ACP and then that uh, third to the right can is mix match stuff there's three different calibers in there uh, the one next to that is all 12 gauge, and the one on the, on the end is completely uh, magazines. And then uh, a few more spare magazines right here. And that's going to do it for the video, everybody. Uh, 2018 to 2019, there was a bunch of stuff added to the collection, and I couldn't be happier with it. But uh, I guess you'll just have to come back next year and see what else is added. Uh, throughout the year here, I'm going to try to start doing other kinds of videos, whether that be uh, shooting, reviews, uh, random conversation, and just stuff of that nature. I haven't quite figured out what kind of videos I'm going to do yet as these collection videos are kind of my favorite. So um, I'm going to leave you with that, and I hope everybody has a great new year, and I'll see you next time.